Hey folks, Jay here on Monday morning, the 16th of January with your Leeds news. I'll bring this in a bit closer because somebody was complaining that the sound wasn't right last week, so that was one. We got it right. Uh, how's everybody doing? Did you have a good weekend? I hope so. And um, we've got it's Monday, so bumper news edition. So we'll try and get through this as quick as we can. Um, I have had a look at the comments this morning because we are doing this live. If anyone's wondering why I'm doing it live versus recording all the pictures. Unfortunately, the software I have on my PC at the moment, I'm locked out of and I've been trying to get back into it for a week. So um, until I can get locked back into my software, I'm going to have to do it live for a bit. So I hope that's okay with everybody. Uh, so let's start off. I'm not covering the leads versus um, oh, the Aston Villa game from the weekend. Um, I was on Just Joe's show over on his page. I'll link it at the end of this video. Um, if you want my opinions on Jesse Marsh staying at Leeds or that whole thing the whole match review in general you can go check out on joe show i will link it after i finish going live today um short answer i think he's running out of road i think jesse's got about three games left i think if he loses the cardiff and he loses the brentford he's done i think more importantly than the cardiff game he needs to win the next two league games then you've got scum but then after that he needs to win the next two games there as well he needs to start picking the points i thought Leeds were excellent against cardiff but if we'd said that at the start of the season it would have been fine half through the season it's not so fine. We need to get moving my points. So I think Jesse's running out of road, unfortunately. I like the guy, but I think he's running out of road. Let's get into the news then. Let's get cracking with this. Uh, I'm going to start off with a few bits and pieces. I have had a glance at the comments and I will reference some things as we go through it. Um, just start off with a rumor that's popped out. I don't think there's very any, I don't think there's any credibility to this rumor at all, but we wait and see. Uh, it's in the midfield sphere and according uh, to a place in France, Leeds have inquired about Salon Eterna, midfielder, Lasana Kula Bali. He's rated at about eight and a half million. He did play for Rangers during the 18 19 season as well. So he's some experience playing in the UK. He's 26 years of age, so good age. And apparently, Forrest and Marseille and Monaco are also interested in the midfielder. He's Malayan um, by nationality. Um, I given you Nahi, so that's popping around. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll, we'll get on to Nahi because that's the big story. There's a lot going on in this. And I'll bring you up to date on this as well. What I will say, and it's just from a couple of comments in the in the chat, and just to be really, really clear on this, Azadine Unahi, similar to Charles de Ketelar, never said he didn't want to play for Leeds. That isn't what's been said. The player said, and his agent said, he had a preference to go to Napoli in Italy because they're top of Serie A. That's, that's the deal. It was a preference. Doesn't say he doesn't want to play for Leeds. So just be really, really clear on that. The player never said, he didn't want to play for Leeds. So we just knock that on the head, get that out of the vocabulary because it's not real. It's just not real. So that's the first thing. But we bring up the speed. And according to Fabrizio Romano on Saturday, um, Leeds have moved on from Jorginho Rutter and they had decided, they were deciding how they wanted to proceed with the deal for Unai, given that Napoli were involved in the equation as well. The player's agent said that the, that the player was interested in the move to Napoli, the Serie A leaders and Champions League football being the obvious um, appeal there. Uh, but on, And they had bid 15 million euro Napoli up to that point. On Sunday, Romano said the Leeds had decided to move for the player. The reason Leeds had delayed the Jorginho Rutter deal as well was apparently because Leeds were trying to get the initial payment fee down a bit so they could put some money into the deal for Nahi as well and get two players rather than just one, which is a clever move. But on Sunday, Romano said Leeds had decided to make a move from, but other clubs were now interested in the player as well. Uh, according to Il Matina, on Monday, they said that Napoli want, um, don't want to be involved in an auction, and it looks like an auction is taking place with Leeds just outbidding them every single time. So what's happened is they seem to have changed their mind on being involved in this deal, as they've said, they do not want to get involved in an auction. In fact, the chairman's exact, mood, uh, exact, the chairman's exact words were, I'm in no mood to get into an auction. <clears throat> so we move on to today then. Um, and according to, again, according to Il Matina, the, the source there have said that Leeds are now close to securing a deal for Unai. Leeds apparently have bid about 25 million euro. Now, a lot of that won't be up front. We know that structured deals. Um, but again, according to Il Matina this morning, they are saying the deal is all but done or at least agreed. There's negotiations for player needs to happen now um, as well as medicals will need to happen as well. But a good move. Um, if I was being perfectly honest about it, I, I like to tell you a Seco Fafana coming in from an experienced point of view, a guy in his 20s, a guy who captained his team, another leader to add to that group of people. I think seeing another 20-year-old comes in as another young player and, and with young players you get at times, levels of inconsistency, which we, we've seen this season. So, um, But a strong signing and a strong move 
um, and one that I think will put Leeds in a strong position to, to move on the second half of the season. The big thing's going to be getting these players into the Leeds team because they have to come into the Leeds team. If we're buying these players now, if we're spending this amount of money on these players, we've got to start putting the money into this. Um, just also, I've just seen, we'll move on from this, but the uh, conversations, and, and Lee has just put it in, um, sorry, Jerry English just put it in the chat there, um, about the possibility of Sean Dyke taking over at Leeds. Just be really clear on this as well. Anyone who doesn't know who Juan Martinez is, Juan Martinez is a parody account. It's not a real agent. It's a bloke in England. Okay, he outed himself in the summer. It's just for fun. It's a bit of fun. He got talk sport to read out that the Leeds were interested in Sean Dyke, which I thought was hilarious. Um, but if you're reading Juan Martinez or retweets of Juan Martinez or anything to do with uh, Juan Martinez, which was what Sean Dyke rumor is, he has started that rumor again this weekend. It's not true. Just nothing in it. There's nothing in it at all. Sean Dyke is not coming to Leeds. So just don't don't spend time the, the day winding yourself up, but let's just crack on and move past it uh, let's talk about another potential signing coming in and again i put zero credence to this i don't think this is going to happen at all because we've just gone and signed the striker but according to 90 minutes so a massive pinch of salt territory there leads have been offered a chance to sign south korean striker cho gu sung and um, who did play in the world cup as well celtic and rangers are also said to be interested in the player celtic are buying an awful lot of players from from asia at the moment as well so that seems to market they're shopping in and they're doing quite well with it and um, if you look at a couple of players kyogo who keep an eye on is pretty good maeda as well and um, and not to mention Rio Tate in midfield, I'm a big, big fan of. Yeah, so they're interested in, in, in Cho as well. Uh, I don't think Leeds are interested in the player. I think Leeds will be done after now. I'd like to see Leeds in one more player, either left back or centre back. I think that's a good January transfer, but it's been really good so far. Uh, move on, then let's talk about Elk Owens. And according to multiple places, um, Blackburn Rovers are in talks with Leeds and negotiations around bringing Joe Gellhart to Blackburn on loan for the remainder of the season. Um, the financial terms haven't been agreed as of yet, is what they were saying, but that they are locked in it. Joffy could still be involved in the Cardiff game on Wednesday. Uh, it might be his final game before he heads out on loan. It's a great move for him. I think it's a really good move. They're in a good place, Blackburn. He'd go in there to a positive dressing room who are pushing, trying to get into the playoffs. It'd be good for him, and, and, and fingers crossed for him, all goes well. Uh, move on then. Let's have a quick chat about the 49ers. And David Ornstein has an article in the Athletic today talking about that the 49ers have shown an increasing amount of influence in Leeds in pushing through the Georgina Rutter deal. If you're wondering who is financing the, the transfers for January, it's becoming more and more apparent that this is direct investment from the 49ers themselves. Um, clearly not willing to hang around and wait any longer. There's been loads of rumors around the last week about who was funding this and was it the 49ers or was it potentially a... Uh, a prince from the Middle East. Um, but it's become more and more apparent that the 49ers are involved in this. The 49ers would have to have signed off on all of these deals as well because with the clause to buy out leads, they will be footing the bill for a lot of the payments of these players going into the future. So an important one for them to get to know. Um, but great to see the 49ers stepping up. And if you haven't seen the interview that we did with Cam Inman from the 49ers, it's on the channel. I recommend you go check it out. If you want to know what leads we like under an ownership model, there is a moment in there where he says moving stadium. He means redevelopment of the stadium in case you haven't watched that and you get panicked by that. Um, but the stadium is a big thing for them as well. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it looks like more and more of an influence on the 49ers ahead of their takeover, which is scheduled for um, next year. So uh, on the move of to on the on, on the topic of takeovers, um, let's have a quick chat really about one that's come out this morning. And again, this is an interesting one and everyone's going to get really excited about this. So I hope whoever watches this can temper their excitement a little bit. Um, I'm in that kind of mood today just to Tell everyone to relax a bit. I've had a couple of days to calm down. Uh, according to a couple of places this morning, uh, the Middle Eastern interest in buying leads um, is coming out. Apparently, apparently, big pinch of salt and probably not true, but apparently uh, the crown prince of Jordan, Hussein bin Abdullah, is the man who is interested. He's only 28 years of old, age as, as an owner or as a potential investment fund um, is looking at purchasing Rajasani shares from Leeds now. Let's put this in contact before we lose the run of ourselves. This is not a Saudi billionaire taking over Leeds or interest in buying Leeds. If you look at the um, what these people are worth, um, Hassan bin Abdullah is rumoured to be worth in the region of $715 million, um, which is not bad. Radrazani, however, is worth in the region of $450 million. So there's not a huge gap there. And then if you look at the York family who own 49ers Enterprises who are involved in Leeds, they're worth anything between two point five and five billion dollars so if you want to look at the tree prince abdullah been linked roger zandy already there and the york family who own front 49ers enterprises the york family are by a mile by a mile the clear wealth source there 2.5 billion versus 715 million um, and it could be anything up to 5 billion as well so um 
don't get too excited about the possibility of a crown prince who has less money than our, our current owners. So um, that'll be it. Um, people ask about the new coach. I have heard this is a strange one. Leeds were two days away from announcing a new coach over a week ago and been nothing from the club since then. So um, unfortunately, there's nothing there at the moment. Um, I don't think Jesse will walk away from this, but I do think he's got a couple of games to save his job. And as I said, I, I do think we were better against Aston Villa than we've been against most teams. I thought we were pretty comfortable in most of the game. It's, it's again, it's a counter-attack that catches us in the, a pretty good, decent goal for the second one. If you're honest, it's a great strike and a great save, but there's nothing you can do with the reaction. So the problem is, if this had happened at the start of the season, we'd be saying encouraging performance, plenty to build on, loads of time. Middle of the way through the season, you're looking at now going, we need to get wins. Now, Jesse made a comment where he said, I would be happier with this performance over wins. And people have, you know, snipped the sound by and, and taken it out of context. What he actually said was, what he actually said was um, that if we played like this, he would take this a performance like this every week over a defeat or over one win. Because if we play like this every single week, we win more games than we lose. And that's, that's true. That's a true point. But it's been taken out of context right now. Jesse can't say anything without, without being um, attacked for it. I said on Joe's show during the week, if he, if he had came out and said that we were in a relegation battle, people would have criticised him for that. He came out and said we weren't in a relegation battle and people are criticising him for that. Can't really win. But I do think Jesse's running out of road. I think he's got two to three games left to save his job. And to really get this moving, it has to click at some point, bringing all these great players, these new players in. There's no point sitting them all on the bench. Like, Max Verber sitting on the bench the weekend. What was the point of that? Should be in a starting 11. A starting 11, especially from a defensive perspective, hasn't been good enough to get us points. It's got to change. So let's look Let's look at it. Let's let's have a look at it. Let's see what we want to do. I got a bond there. Okay, right. I'm done, folks. Um, that'll be it for today. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you like the channel, you can subscribe and like. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow morning with some more news. Do you know anything? Looks like it's 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 gathering pace. Next 24, 48 hours will be really, really interesting on that one. So another positive move. Let me know what you think about them. Let me know what you think about the trans January transfer window so far. We, you know, a lot of people on this channel who watched this, commented, said, we won't sign anybody. We've signed two, broken our transfer record. And it looks like it could be heading for a third one. So let me know what you think. I'd love to get some insight into that as well. And I'll be in chat later on to have a, have a conversation with you guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.